This is your complete guide to the city of Stockholm. How to get here from the airport, how to get around the place, what attractions to see, how to have a song and a dance with ABBA, and how to have the most amazing time whilst you're here in one of the most iconic cities in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Swedish capital. I guarantee that you'll absolutely love this place. Whether it's being surrounded by nature, the fantastic architecture, the amazing experiences and attractions, the friendly people, and everything in between. I'm pretty sure that if you follow this guide, you'll have the most amazing time here in Stockholm. Stockholm is the largest city in Scandinavia. And if we take a look at a map of Stockholm, you'll realize that it's spread out over 14 islands. This looks intimidating, but most of the things that you'll be interested in are located in these middle four or five islands. Before I explain what there is to do here in Stockholm, I'm going to tell you how to get here from the airport and how to get around the city. If you're not interested in that and just want to see the attractions, fast forward to the relevant part of the video now. Stockholm is served by four airports, but you'll probably arrive in one of two. Stockholm Bromma, which is a small regional airport just outside the city, but most likely you'll end up here at Stockholm Arlanda International Airport, the main airport that services the city. When you arrive, you'll see signs for something called the Arlanda Express. This is the direct train that will take you from the airport to the city without stopping. It's the quickest way to get into the city center. Once you buy a ticket, you'll get your own private lift, which takes you to your own private platform, where you get on your own private train, and it will take you to the city in exactly 18 minutes. It's fast, it's comfortable, it's quiet, and it's also expensive, especially compared to the cheapest way of getting into the center of Stockholm. If you're prepared to sit on a normal commuter bus for an hour, it will cost you literally one-tenth of the price. There's also normal commuter trains, shuttle buses and taxis as per normal, but in my opinion, the Orlando Express is definitely worth the extra expense. If you're flying into Bromma, it's actually the shuttle bus that is the best compromise between price, travel time and convenience. When you arrive in the center of Stockholm, you'll realize that the city is very walkable. The streets are wide and it's very easy to navigate around. But it might take you a while to walk places, which is why I highly recommend buying an all-inclusive travel pass. This allows you unlimited access to the metros, the local commuter trains, the buses, and even the boats to get you around the city. To do this, all you have to do is find a ticket machine, follow the instructions on the screen, and it will spit you out this green card. To use it, simply tap it on one of the turnstiles and away you go. It's literally that simple. You can do exactly the same thing if you've bought your tickets via the app. Just use your phone and the QR code it creates to let yourself in. And the transport network itself is fast, efficient and virtually no different to any other mainstream European city that has excellent public transport facilities. The metro stations especially are very nicely decorated, all the signs are both in Swedish and English, and they're well signposted, so it's almost impossible to get lost on this network. Alternatively, if you don't want to use public transport, Stockholm is one of the most cycle-friendly cities in the world. There are plenty of places where you can hire a bike or an electric scooter and use one of the hundreds of dedicated bike lanes, complete with your own traffic lights, to get around the city. It's actually a fun way of seeing the city if you like that sort of thing. The sightseeing buses are a decent way of seeing the city if you have a short amount of time. So now that you're here and you know how to get around the place, let's visit this island right here in the middle, where you'll find Stockholm's most famous attraction. The Royal Palace. This is Sweden's equivalent to Buckingham Palace as this is the current official residence of His Majesty the King, King Carl Gustav XVI. At time of recording, he is the longest reigning Swedish monarch in history. As you can expect from any royal palace, it's heavily guarded, so no misbehaving whilst you're here. 
The entry price is actually quite reasonable and you can buy your tickets here at the ticket office or online. When you go inside, there's many different cool things that you can see. Most notably of which is the treasury, which houses all of the Swedish crown jewels. It has the crowns, orbs and scepters of former monarchs, the current crowns of all the princes and princesses, and the royal regalia that His Majesty the King wears personally, including the current coronation crown. You'll also visit the state rooms, which includes this, the Grand Hall of State, one of the most important rooms in all of Sweden. And right at the end of this is the world-famous Silver Throne, the one the king actually sits on. You'll go through various halls, especially this one that's got the coat of arms of all the reigning monarchs in the world, including our very own King Charles. And if you don't know much about Swedish history or the royal family, you'll certainly learn a lot here. It's very mesmerizing to see what sort of regalia they wear for different functions. Your tour also includes a visit to the state apartments themselves. These are the various rooms that the royal family actually uses. Everything from iconic staircases, the intricately designed bedchambers, and even the council chamber, where the king and queen will meet with the government in this very long table with all the books in the middle. I'm not going to talk too much more about the royal palace because I'll be making a separate video right here on my channel, but suffice to say, a visit to the royal palace is definitely one of the top things that you should do when you're visiting Stockholm. This video will also outline how to see the changing of the guard ceremony, which happens on most days at exactly 12.15. It's very similar to the one that happens in London, albeit with a Swedish twist. Check out my future video right here. Right next to the Royal Palace, you'll find this peach-coloured building. Believe it or not, this is possibly the most important church in the city. Stockholm Cathedral this is the venue for all the royal weddings, and is generally the de facto church that the royal family chooses to attend. Inside, you'll find that it's intricately decorated, like most other cathedrals. It's decked out with colourful stained glass windows and intricate wood carvings, but the unique things that you'll find here in Stockholm Cathedral is this giant statue of George and the Dragon, the royal boxes, where only the king and queen sit in, and it's generally a cathedral with decorations fit for royalty, because it is a royal church. If you're a Finnish, you have your own church literally around the corner that's nowhere near as special or as lavishly decorated. When you're walking around, one place you definitely will find is the area of Gamla Stan, aka the Old Town. You'll notice that the streets and buildings are incredibly old. You'll find cobbled streets literally everywhere, and it's a fun place to explore even if you don't know where you're going. You'll eventually find your way into the main town square. This is Stotoriet, and is possibly the most photographed area in all of Stockholm. There's no shortage of things to photograph or places to eat around here. If you're taking one of the many walking tours available, they usually start right here in Stotoriet. The main attraction you'll find here is the Nobel Prize Museum. Now, if you don't know anything about Alfred Nobel, or what prizes go in what categories, you can easily learn it here. And the museum itself is a very interesting look at some of the innovations that have changed the world for the better. You'll recognize some of the names of the Nobel Prize winners, and some of them you might never have heard of. But you can look up every single one of them from here. Whilst you're walking around Gamlastan, you'll fall in love with the picturesque streets, the amazing views across the water, and chilling out in one of the many eateries that's on the waterfront. If you get a chance to eat at Mr. French here, you'll be treated like royalty. Speaking of food, there is a tradition here in Sweden called fika. This is effectively socializing over coffee and baked goods. And there's no shortage of places around the city where you can buy reasonably priced coffee and cakes and sit around and socialize. Even if you have to make do with 7-Eleven coffee and donuts, it's always nice to enjoy a coffee break somewhere here in Stockholm. If you look across the water, you'll see a small island known as Riederholmen. 
There's not much to it, it's got some iconic buildings and a nice square, but the main attraction is this, Riederholmen Church. Unlike Stockholm Cathedral, which celebrates births and weddings, Riederholmen Church is used if a member of the Swedish royal family dies. The best way to describe this place is that it's an incredibly fancy graveyard, as this is the final resting place for most of Sweden's iconic royals. It's pretty kooky to see quite a lot of them on display. What's also on display are the plaques of the former royals from around the world that have died. So the plaques that you saw before at the royal palace, once a royal dies, they end up here. And this one makes me particularly sad, the plaque of our beloved Queen Elizabeth II. RIP mom, we miss you dearly. But a visit to Riederholmen Church is definitely worth it, mainly for the history and nostalgia, and if you can get over the fact that you're literally surrounded by hundreds of dead bodies, the church itself is actually quite nice. It's very soothing and calming, it's very quiet, and you'll actually have a good time. I know that sounds weird given that you're in a giant mausoleum, but yeah, definitely worth checking out. To get back onto the main island, you'll probably need to walk through this, the Parliament House. This is where the Swedish Parliament actually does its business. If you are interested, you can actually take a tour around Parliament. The tours are free, but they're only available at selected times, so please check this website if you are at all interested. Once you're back on the main island, and right next to Central Station, is the area of Normalm. This is the ultra-modern area of the city, and it's here that you'll most likely find things such as shops, bars, restaurants, nightclubs, and everything you'd expect from a western city. You'll even come across mega shopping complexes like the Gallerian, but to be honest, it's no different to any other shopping mall that you'll find back at home. Okay, that's a little different, but in general, it's probably no different to what you're already used to, if you do need to do some shopping, this is a nice place to go. And whilst walking around here, you'll get some amazing waterside views of various attractions around, such as the Royal Dramatic Theatre, where you can watch plays, or if there's nothing on, dine in the restaurant that overlooks the city, the Royal Opera House, and the Royal Concerts Hall. Please note that these are two different buildings in two different locations, so bear that in mind if you've booked to see a concert or the opera or the ballet. You might also come across Ingmar Bergman's Garter, a street that's named after the famous Swedish screenwriter Ingmar Bergman, and the famous Nobis Hotel, built on the site of the former Credit Banken, where in a famous bank robbery, the victims started to develop sympathetic feelings towards their captors. This is the place that coined the term Stockholm Syndrome. Around the corner, you'll find Kungstra Gordon. This is a very lovely park space in and amongst all this concrete. It's a nice place to chill out, there's plenty of eateries around, and you can even challenge the locals to a game of chess here. It's the Swedish equivalent to Washington Square Park. You might also come across St. Clara's Church. It's a lovely church, yes, but it's also lovely to visit, especially if someone is playing music. And when I arrived, I was literally treated to the voice of God. What an excellent singer this guy was. Head south and you'll come across the National Museum. Like most national museums, it has a significant amount of famous art, so if you are an art lover, you'll be happy here. Whether it's paintings, or sculptures, or everything in between, this museum definitely has it all. And if you like museums, be sure to visit the nearby island of Skepsholmen. But don't walk too quickly because you'll come across this amazing bridge, with the iconic gold leaf crowns in the middle, and it provides some excellent photo opportunities. Once you've reached Skepsholmen, you'll come across various museums such as the Toy Museum, more interesting for kids than it is adults but still worth a look, and you'll come across the Modern Art Museum. Like most modern art, it's a little bit kooky, it's incredibly weird, and some of it is almost pornographic. But that's what you kind of expect in most modern art museums these days. So if you think that art is a picture of a guy setting himself on fire, well, this is the place for you. 
Go south of that and you'll also come across this, the Castellet. This is a citadel that's located on its own island. It's very picturesque and you can take tours of the actual castle bit itself. And if you don't want to go inside, that's okay, there's various places to chill out and just enjoy the view. Speaking of which, you'll be able to see the next island we're visiting from here. This is the island of Jurgordon. This is a very tranquil green space if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. However, it has some very loud attractions as well, most notable of which, the Tivoli Grunerlund theme park. If you're a thrill seeker and you want some roller coasters and rides, or if you just want to entertain the kids, this certainly fits the bill. But if you want a better use of your time and money, I highly recommend going to the largest attraction on the island. This is Skansen. It's Europe's first ever open air museum. But what is an open air museum? In short, to preserve Swedish culture and heritage, they've accrued traditional Swedish buildings and architecture from around the country and have shipped it over piece by piece and reconstructed here so that you can see what life is like in traditional Sweden. When you walk around the place, you'll experience what traditional Swedish life is actually all about. The people dressed in traditional Swedish clothing will demonstrate traditional Swedish arts and crafts and it's a very intriguing look as to how life was like back in the day. You can also explore the typical buildings that they used to live in and the typical conditions they used to work in. It's all very immersive, authentic and educational, but it also happens to be part botanical garden, just in case you want to see some nice flowers, and it's also part zoo, just in case you want to see some animals as well. You can literally spend most of the day here in Skansen, especially if they're holding music events, which is included in the ticket price. My absolute favourite attraction here in Stockholm happens to be across the road from Skansen. This is the ABBA Museum. I know that's pretty sad, try not to laugh too hard at me for this, but as an enthusiast of incredibly cheesy music, I enjoyed this very, very much. Inside, you'll learn all about the most amazing band to have ever come out of Sweden, everything from their early lives to what they're doing now, you'll get to see most of their iconic costumes, the most famous of which you'll recognise from their Eurovision Song Contest performance of Waterloo, complete with the Waterloo guitar. You can see their recording studios, their musical instruments, their many awards, and trust me, they've won a lot. And in addition to their many, many costumes, you'll also see their personal belongings. Huh, Agnetha's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Smart girl. But the coolest thing is the museum's interactivity. So you can actually go into a song booth and record yourself singing with ABBA, experience what it's like at an ABBA concert back in the day, there's a cool dance floor where you can dance with strangers, and whilst we're talking about dancing, you can virtually dance on stage with ABBA. Yes, they've got this 3D projection stage where you can literally get on stage and copy their dance moves. This guy did surprisingly well, this girl, she obviously knew the dance moves beforehand, and this other guy, well, he was probably drunk at the time. But overall, if you are a fan of the Fabulous Four, you'll absolutely love it here like I did. It's a happy museum and it definitely makes a difference when even the staff are dancing away and having a good time. But if cheesy 70s slash 80s music isn't your thing, that's okay, walk down the street to the Vossa Museum. The Vossa is possibly one of the most famous shipwrecks in the world. It's been dredged up from the sea and is now permanently on display here in Stockholm. The ship itself, it's absolutely massive. You'll be in awe at the actual size of the thing. And if you don't know much about the Vorsa, there's plenty of exhibits illustrating its tragic history, its gruesome deaths, and overall, this is a massive eye-opener as to what life was like on the seas back then. I recommend that you go on one of the many guided tours that's included in your ticket price. There's plenty of other museums here in Joe Gordon's, most notable of which is the Nordic Museum. So if you want to find out what life is like here in the Nordic countries, you can do it in this rather cool museum. There's also the Viking Museum. 
you can learn everything you need to know about Vikings, learn all about Norse mythology, and there's a cool theme park style ride inside that will guide you through the history timeline of these famous people. There's also a museum about shipwrecks and the Spirit Museum, but in short, you can spend all day on the island of Jogordans, and there's definitely no shortage of things to do here. But out of all these main attractions, there's one more attraction on the west side of the city that I highly recommend that you check out. This is Stockholm City Hall, and you've probably seen this building from the water already. This is the administrative center of the entire city. Even if you don't want to go inside, it's a lovely building to walk around, there's lots of nice green spaces, and you get this lovely view across the water. If you do want to visit the inside of City Hall, you can't book the tours in advance. You literally have to come here to the ticket office to see if there's any availability. But if there is, you'll get this lovely guided tour of one of the most interesting buildings here in Stockholm. Take this room for example, the Blue Hall which isn't at all blue, there's a reason why it's specifically called that, but this is the famous venue where the Nobel Prizes are handed out. And when you're on a tour, they'll tell you all about the interesting details that you'll find in this great hall. Specifically, what's happened in the council chamber. It's a pretty cool room and this is where all the administrative stuff happens. Where they vote, where they discuss things, and it's very similar to any other parliament building even though the Parliament building is a separate building in this country. You'll even come across this lavishly decorated long room, known as the gallery, and you can actually be married in here. It's very popular with the locals, and it's a very prestigious venue to get married in. But no room at City Hall is grander than the Golden Hall. When you walk in, it's absolutely stunning, and you'll ask yourself, is this real gold? And the answer, is yes. 18 million mosaic tiles, most of which are made with gold leaf. It's definitely a wow factor room, and there's definitely no shortage of photo and video opportunities here. This hall is simply amazing. The attractions I've mentioned so far in this video are the must see and do things that you'll need to do whilst you're here in the city of Stockholm. However, if you're willing to travel a little bit further out, there's plenty of other cool things also. But one thing I definitely don't recommend is visiting the southern island of Soldemarne. Okay, there's a few things to do. There's the State Museum, they've got some lovely Swedish traditional architecture, there's lots of bars and restaurants and stuff, they've got this cool looking yellow church, the Katarina church that you've probably seen across the water, and there's Fotografiska. This is the famous photography museum slash restaurant. The museum itself is actually pretty good, I enjoyed it because I have an interest in photography, but if you have absolutely no interest at all, there's much better places to spend your time and money than this part of the city. A quirky thing to do that's a short metro ride away is to visit this, the Globen. Currently known as the Avicii Arena for sponsorship reasons, this is the world's largest hemispherical building and is the largest concert venue in the city. It's also the home of the Swedish national ice hockey team, and boy do these Swedes love their ice hockey. But if there's no hockey on, or any event, you can pay to go up the side of the building just like this. This is the sky view, and you'll be put in this glass dome, and when the roof opens, you'll slowly rise up the side of the building. It's pretty kooky to be going up the side of a circular building in a glass pod, and it affords you some excellent photo and video opportunities. When you reach the top, you'll get a full 360 degree view over the entire city of Stockholm. It's about 10 minutes each way, so the total time of the attraction is roughly 20 minutes. So if you want a quick attraction to do, I recommend doing this. And if you get bored of that, there's always the Globin Shopping Centre next door, where you can shop and eat, etc. Right next door to that, you'll find the Tele2 Arena. This stadium is home to the city's football clubs, Hammerby Football and Joe Gordons. And on the opposite side, you'll find Hovet. This smaller ice hockey venue is home to the two professional teams that play here, Joe Gordons Ice Hockey and their arch rivals AIK. 
if you do manage to catch a sporting event around here, the atmosphere is amazing and it does come recommended. However, the largest sporting stadium can be found in the north side of the city. This is the Friends Arena, the largest stadium in Scandinavia and is home to the Swedish national football team. Once again, if you can get tickets to a game, you'll have an amazing time here. If it's night time and you're bored, head on over to the Telefon Plan Tower. This former transmission tower is now an art installation where you can control the colors of the lights in the window. Once the sun goes down, fire up the app, which is completely free of course, and you can change the colors of the lights in every single window of the tower. This is a pretty trippy thing to do, and if you are wondering if I'm actually controlling the lights on there, yes, that's actually me doing that. I'm actually changing the lights of the tower. I think I might just change it to this Manchester United red and white pattern, and lo and behold, there it is. And as soon as I've walked away from the tower, it appears that somebody else doesn't like my design and has changed it already. Well, that was fun while it lasted. Finally, the one other attraction that I urge you to see is make a special trip to visit Drottningholm Palace. This is the summer residence of the Swedish royal family. And whilst you can get there with a combination of buses, metros, etc., the most pleasant way to get there is via a boat that you can catch just outside City Hall. Especially on a nice day like today, it's actually beautiful to see some of the more remote regions of Stockholm. You'll love the quaint architecture and the nature, but eventually you'll arrive at the actual palace itself. And what a palace it is! It's heavily guarded, as you can imagine from being a royal residence, but once you step inside, you'll realize how amazing it actually is. The walls scream history, and there's lots of places where you can learn all about Swedish history and the royal family from here. It's also cool to see where they generally hang out during the summertime. Everything from the walls, the tapestries, the intricate bedchambers, the stuff on the ceilings, absolutely everything is awe-inspiring here. It even has its own formal gardens, complete with its own maze, its own theatre, which is very grand, and it also has oriental-style summer houses. This will take you a whole afternoon to explore, and I'm not going to talk too much more because I'm making a separate video about it right here, be sure to check that out when it's up. Overall everyone, I recommend that you visit Stockholm at least once in your life. Whether it's for the lovely scenery, the gorgeous waterfront views, these many many attractions, the laid-back atmosphere, the super nice Swedish people that live here, or if you just want to dance around to ABBA songs, this definitely comes highly recommended. And if you are umming and eyeing as to whether or not to actually visit, don't hesitate. Book your flights and hotel now, I guarantee you won't regret it. Okay Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to Stockholm. I've already mentioned all the ways that you can arrive here from the airport. I should also point out that you can also arrive by ferry. At the beginning of the video, I also told you how to get around the city, and I do strongly recommend that you buy an all-inclusive travel pass. Because Stockholm is a massive city, and sometimes you'll need public transport in order to save your legs. The cost of things? Well, as per any other Scandinavian country, it can get quite pricey, particularly if you like to eat out a lot. That said, Sweden is nowhere near as expensive as some of the other Scandinavian countries that I've visited. If you're smart about things, it can actually be quite a cost-effective city break. If you're looking for a place to stay, the absolute ideal location is somewhere near the Royal Palace. Alternatively, stay near Central Station in the district of Normal. As a rule of thumb, the closer you get to the Royal Palace, the more expensive the hotels become so bear that in mind. You can find a plethora of reasonably priced hotels, but usually they're on the outskirts of the city and you'll need public transportation to get in. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, if you're planning to do every single attraction, like I did, please please buy a Stockholm Go City Pass. This one ticket will allow you access to pretty much every attraction in the city for a set number of days. This will save you a boatload of money, and it's incredibly simple to use. 
All you need to do is show the QR code at the ticket office and they let you in. It's as simple as that. It's definitely worth the money. Whilst we're talking about attractions, some of them have incredibly short opening times. My advice to you is to make a list of all the attractions you want to see and figure out their opening and closing times. This will save you some disappointment if you arrive at an attraction that's already closed. Almost nowhere here in Stockholm takes actual cash anymore. Contactless payments have become the de facto way of paying for goods and services here in Sweden and particularly here in Stockholm. You can carry a small amount of cash to tip a waitress or a hotel maid etc. But in all honesty, if you have a contactless credit card, you'll be absolutely fine without a single cent of currency. When you buy anything in a glass or plastic container, you'll be charged a small deposit fee. You can get this back if you deposit your empty container in one of the many recycling machines across the city, usually located in supermarkets. The official language here is Swedish, but the Swedes are a multilingual nation of people. And if you speak any Western language, such as English, French, German, Danish, they'll pretty much understand and respond accordingly. The signs are both in Swedish and English, so if you're a native English speaker, you definitely won't struggle here. And finally, Stockholm is a big city, and if you've never been here before, you'll definitely need a map or two in order to navigate around the place. You could pick up a free paper map virtually anywhere, at the train station, at the hotel, at the tourist office, but my advice, if you're digitally minded, is to download an offline map to keep on your phone, just in case you lose your paper map for some reason. I hope this video inspires and motivates you to visit this wonderful Swedish city. And if you have found this video at all helpful, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, comment them on the comment section below. And if you've got any other bucket list ideas you want me to do, tweet them at me. If I get enough suggestions, I'll probably go ahead and do it. But guys, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Oh, I love that. <laughs>